What's up, everybody? It is Coach Adam here from Decentralized Strength and Conditioning. I am a certified strength and conditioning specialist, and I help everybody to maximize on their physique, fitness levels, and athleticism, no matter where you are in your lifespan. And we do that by making mainly workout and demo commentary videos throughout the weekdays. And then we have the Decentralized and Fitness podcast, which is your traditional full-length podcast. And then we have my own personal fitness journal, which we're going to do today, as well as my own workout uh, video commentary videos, which come out on Sundays as well. So I do this to really talk about my week overall. And what I do is I track all my stats, my calories, I take progress photos, I track my weight, you know, I track my workouts, and then I talk about it on Sunday to keep myself accountable, to keep myself on track, to make sure that I'm uh, adhering to my goals and my process processes, but it's also for you guys to really show you what it really takes to uh, reach your goals and to uh, maintain them year round. And my ultimate goals here are just to maximize on my physique, my fitness levels, and my athleticism really throughout my whole lifespan. And for my personal physique goals is to really be able to see my abs and my lower abs year round. But I also want to uh, gradually try to increase my muscle mass to 160 pounds. Uh, but that I am finding extremely difficult. You know, my body really likes to be around 155 pounds, um, especially in terms of having that physique that I want. 155 pounds really seems to be the magic number. And if I'm eating like 4,000, 45, over 4,000 calories for a week, maybe I'll get over to 160 pounds. On terms of my fitness levels, I want to maintain a sub 515 on the two mile bike test in terms of my anaerobic capacity, but I also, in terms of my aerobic capacity, how well I can do at long distance activities, I I test that by making sure that I'm getting you no know, 20 to 30 minute continuous walk in every single day or at least 20 to 30 minutes on some type of cardio equipment where that's an elliptical a bike or you know just like a treadmill but the key there is really to get 20 to 30 minutes of continuous activity and when I first started doing that you know back about a year maybe a year and a half ago when I was you know back in uh we'll say the summer of 2022 I started going for you know daily walks and I found it extremely difficult just to even get 15 minutes and now I can easily do 30 minutes 40 minutes without really uh, even looking at the time so I say that is some pretty good progress and I find that a 20 30 minute walk I'm getting a good 5,000 steps in and really the goal is to get 10,000, 7 to 10,000 steps in on a daily basis. And you're really going to need to get some type of continuous cardio activity in. But the big key there is to make sure that it is uh, sustainable, it is easy on the joints, and it's not going to leave us uh, injured or beat up on a routine basis. That's why I'm not a big fan of jogging or running to get our daily conditioning and our cardio in. Lastly, my athleticism, uh, I do two power and core workouts a week, but I need to do some additional testing a few times a year. And for that, I think a 30 inch vertical jump would be a great number to get. And I need a jump mat for that. And then I got to do some time sprints as well. So I'd be, I'd like to get five seconds on a 40 yard dash, but we'll have to see how that happens because you know, last month I just went a little bit too heavy on my hamstring exercise my posterior chain and the uh the single leg squats and over the past two weeks here i've been kind of just uh recovering from tweaking my hip and my back a little bit so i got to be really careful when i get back to the strength next month a few other things here in terms of my diet i'm trying to maintain an average of 3.25 thousand to 
3,500 calories a day. And most, and uh, I have to say my diet is probably the most dialed in it's ever been. Um, I'm eating only, um, I eat real foods, so no processed foods. The only processed foods I really have is I'll have some ground meat or I'll have, you know, like pork chops or chicken or something like that. That's probably the most processed food I'll have. Everything else I get when it I look at the package, there's no added salt, there's no added sugar, and there's no added oils. Now, of course, if I get, you know, some really high quality mineral salt, I add that to my meals. I'll add honey as a sweetener and I'll eat blueberries and nuts and nutritional salt is a new thing I'm into right now. And the other thing is I'm having is uh, really focusing on my hydration. So I'm having a, uh, I'll just call it a hydration drink every day, at least twice a day, where I'll have some ginger, uh, lemon, some lime, some really fresh aloe vera. And then I'll mix it all together. I'll put maybe some apple cider vinegar in that and then I'll have a glass or two of that in the morning and then I'll make another one at night and I'll have a glass or two of that at night and I find that that's really been helping with dehydration especially since I drink a lot of coffee I just really need to make sure that uh, I'm not overdoing it on the activity and especially you know doing the sauna and going doing the sauna too much which I find that really dehydrates me and I haven't really been doing the sauna over the uh, past few months here. I got rid of some of my other gym memberships, so I've not been going to the sauna. And then the other thing here is, I think I mentioned the nutritional yeast and the different type of salt that I've been getting. So there's the real salt, there's the Celtic sea salt, um, there's Baja gold sea salt, and these are really the highest quality mineral sea salts without um, you know, a lot of those environmental um, we'll say like plastics and stuff like that, that could get into our sea salts or other store-bought salts. And then the other thing I'd like to do more is sit down and read more. Uh, and I'd like to be able to get back into playing some pickleball, some surfing, doing some more competitive activities, some more socializing activities. I just do a lot of walks right now. Uh, so I got to get back out there and do that stuff. So the next slide here is how not to reach my goals. Really three big things. If I continue to train through pain and uh, you know, hurt myself training, that's a big issue. And if I have easy access to foods, processed foods, I'm going to eat those. So I just don't have any of that stuff. Easy access to those foods. And then if I drink too much coffee and not enough water, if I don't stay hydrated, that's going to lead me to want to overeat and I won't be 100% and I'll make stupid decisions. Moving on to the injury report. I got really three big things that I'm worrying, focusing on here. Keeping those scalenes healthy, the jaw, which has been feeling a lot better. Um, the bicep tendon, the shoulder, this has been feeling a lot better, really spending a good amount of time self-massaging my arm, my shoulder, my chest, and just going really light on the exercises that I'm doing on my right arm. I'm only going 15 to 20 reps with really light weight, just trying to build up um, the muscle, <clears throat> the overall muscle, and just um, have some time under tension. I find that if I do power exercises or strength exercises, that is a good way to really aggravate my shoulder and my right hip right now. So I'm going to stay out of those. The other big thing is I've been focusing on is some more pelvic floor muscles. Um, so the muscles inside or underneath the butt. I've been doing some different foam rolling where I'm sitting down on like a chair with a softball and foam rolling more of my hamstrings where the attachments are. And then I've been doing some additional stretches as well, which have been making a big impact, not only in my hips, but in my shoulder, in my posture as well. So that's something I really got to focus on. So right now, I'm just really kind of dialing my workouts back so I can focus on uh, how my body feels. Moving on to my activity report. Um, you know, I walk 30 minutes and get 30, at least 30 minutes of 
cardio in every single day. I do need to do better with getting in that hour of mind stimulating, stimulating activity with movement. Uh, I just need to go out and do some social uh, activities like pickleball or golf or surfing or whatever. You know, I have the time. I just got to go out and make it. That's really the big thing with the activity. All I've been really doing is the walk-in and the gym. So I got to figure out how I can build in some other activities. Looking at my diet report, um, this is my Excel spreadsheet. And this is where I really track all my stats from you know, the beginning of time, 2022, when I started doing this. And over the past three weeks here, my body weight's been an average 156 pounds, a little bit higher this week because my calories have been extremely high over the past week. I had a few days where I ate over 4,000 calories. Um, and then my protein has been around 246 grams. When it comes to protein, uh, we want to have at least our body weight in grams of protein. So if you weigh 160 pounds, 160 grams of protein is really required just for maintenance. And then we want to try to eat an additional 50 grams if we're trying to you know, add a little bit of muscle. So that's why I eat over 200 grams of protein a day. And then for steps, I'm doing really good with the steps. I'm averaging 9,000, but that's honestly lower than it should be because uh, you know, I'll do the bike or I'll do the treadmill and I won't have the phone on me. So it's not actually tracking my steps or my cardio there. That's just a few things. I have uh, a blue line here on my cell spreadsheet. That's when I really started focusing more on the pelvic hip floor, pelvic floor muscles, the pelvic and the hip muscles. And then uh, I have these green lines here, which are saying that I really started to turn around my diet a little bit better on those days. The yellow ones were maybe I wasn't 100% um, happy with the outcome of the day in terms of mostly the diet. I was eating really great quality food, just eating too much of it. So I want to really keep it around that 3,500 to 3,200 uh, calories a day. Uh, but I really don't want to go over, you know, 3,800 is really the max that I'll, I'll eat or try to eat. Let's finish up with my program here for April 2024. I'm on phase five. We're doing 15 to 20 reps here. It's a muscle building uh, phase. And I have three workouts that I do. I have a day one, a day two, a day three. Day three is really optional. I try to get it in a few times a month. I did do it last week. I'm going to try to get one in this weekend. It's just an easy one, just like sled drags and uh, some push-ups. And then I have an arm party day, which I do once, at least once a week. And then I have my rehab circuit, which really the goal is to do that on every day that I do a big workout. So on like day two, uh, day one, and if I do a day three, I'll make sure that I get a workout in there as well. Um, my alarm just went off here. I just got to turn it, make sure the other one turns off. And then the other thing in terms of my conditioning, my anaerobic conditioning, um, I was doing treadmill sprints, eight seconds max effort, then resting for a minute, but that was bugging my hamstrings, my legs. So I'm taking a break from the sprinting. It was just too much on the body last month. And I, uh, Gave myself an injury, basically. So I got to dial that back a bit. Maybe just some beach sprints or beach runs once a week is really ideal to keep the legs ready for that type of activity and to keep the uh, energy system where I want it to be. And then I try to do the same type of protocol on the bike or the elliptical, for example. Something that's easy on the joints that won't leave me beat up. So that's one consideration when it comes to sprinting or running that we want to be careful of. It's really invasive to our joints and our, our muscles. It really beats us, beats us up. Um, the other thing I'd like to get back into is at least doing a day of heat exposure or cold exposure. All right, so I think that's going to kind of wrap up my uh, journal here. Make sure to watch 
my workout commentary as well. I'm I'm kind of backed up on my footage, so I have some workouts from March and February, and then we'll get into the April ones over the upcoming weeks. So until next time, stay safe and keep grinding.